This is my life, which will be given up for you. It made me feel very proud that this was a man who had graduated from Sacred Heart School of Theology. He was a man who was very professional, he had been married, still very much a father, uh, and uh, just a, a fine a human being and a good uh, asset to the Archdiocese of Chicago where, where he, uh, he works. What Cardinal George said to me, Tom, uh, how are things going at Sacred Heart? The answer I said was perfect. And he said, well, I'm, I'm glad you're happy there. And I said, that, well, I owe it to you. And he said, well, how is that? And I said, you're the one who selected the school and it's worked out just fine. Well, they kept telling me I would be a good priest. I just thought they were crazy. Uh, but uh... A man who was here for a long time, he arrived at us without any college education. He worked basically in a factory setting. So he went to Cardinal Stritch for a year, year and a half, uh, and then came over here. And we, with the, the program we have with Stritch, by the time they finish here, he's able to get a BA degree and a Master of Divinity degree. He can talk to people uh, in factories, he can talk to people in farms. He's got a, just a very nice way about him in, in dealing with people. I'm proud to say is a graduate of Sacred Heart School of Theology. Like Sacred Heart, I remember the rector would say that people just want to touch your, just touch you. You know, like Jesus said in the scripture, uh, people just want to touch his cloak. And, uh, and that's, and I found that out in ministry that people just want to have a little bit of your time. We are a second career seminary. Many of our staff have been here a long, long time. They have a great deal of experience in adult learning and adult education, and I think, I think do it quite well. And there is a difference between someone learning as a college freshman at the age of 19 and someone learning as some of our students are, college freshmen at 45 and 50. I was a, a tenured associate professor of English and theater, and the decision amounted to giving up everything I had worked for and uh, it was an enormous uh, decision to make. Uh, very early on in September I had to go down to Marquette uh, to meet with the director of university ministry and uh, walking across the campus in September uh, I was over overwhelmed by enormous grief you know realizing what I had given up and thinking you Ooh, you never should have given it up. Uh, but I prayed intensely and those feelings passed, you know. Um, if a person has not cried in the last month or year, I think it, it, it implies a kind of a distance from life or from people's sufferings or from sadness. It's not the kind of person that I think is going to carry on the ministry of Jesus. A man who was profoundly moved by human tragedies and human suffering. It's a serious school. It's, uh, it turns out good quality priests uh, who are well prepared. And uh, so my natural concern was, can I keep up? And uh, I found that with the support that I'm given here, it's, uh, it's worked out extremely well for me, extremely well. Touched by life, uh, sometimes hurt by life, sometimes broken a bit by life. And one of the things that I like about that for priesthood is that they, they tend to be men who are able to maintain their ideals about God, believing in God, what's important for a good life in this world what's important to be a good Catholic, a good Christian, a good faithful person, but they're also able to balance that with a recognition of life's challenges. Um, that's the kind of person I'm looking for in the seminary. Someone who can heal the broken, can, can, can lift up the depressed, uh, can strengthen the person who's weak. And, and I find by and large our seminarians are like that. They are, they're men of intelligence, men of integrity, men of compassion and love. Uh, is very much a process that takes men from the careers they worked in before uh, to an identity uh, as a Catholic priest for a local church. And that uh, is, is a big rite of passage. Sacred Heart, I think, provides 
uh, an atmosphere of community, of liturgical prayer, of spiritual direction, and a lot of individual attention to make that happen. At Sacred Heart, we cultivate the priestly imagination of the seminarian so that they are effective ministers, both in the pastoral, the spiritual formation, and in the intellectual formation components of the program. Sacred Heart is a unique national seminary. We set up students for success. What we do using the parameters provided by the program of priestly formation and using the principles from Pastoris Dabo Vobis, we're able to adapt the program so that we meet the needs of the bishops and religious superiors who entrust their students to us. And then we help the seminarian also by meeting their needs and adapting the program to their educational, their pastoral, spiritual, and human formation needs. I, I believe our, our seminary is, is right where I want it to be, and that's in the mainstream of, the, of Roman Catholic theology, Roman Catholic pastoral practice, uh, Roman Catholic spiritual development. And I think in this day and age, that's exactly where we should be. 31 dioceses with students here at Sacred Heart School of Theology. Um, we ha obviously have a relationship with 31 different bishops. We encourage the bishops and vocation directors to visit here annually particularly in some ways, the further someone is away from the school, the less connected they are, and it's important to maintain their connectedness to the diocese. And there's a regular routine we go through. They meet with me, our administrative staff, the, mainly the academic dean, the formation director, and the director of pastoral formation as a group, and where we go over their students. And then they meet with the individual uh, spiritual advisor for each one of the students. Uh, I also try to write well, every two to three weeks to the bishops and vocation directors a letter trying to keep them up the breast with what's going on. Uh, that's proven very effective and well appreciated by both bishops and vocation directors. Once you fall in love with the people, learning the language is much less of a challenge. Because it's hard, but then you're motivated. Because you love the people, you love the culture, you want to be part of them. There's a thirst for knowledge there. Um, to be in relationship with other people and to understand what their faith expressions are, what their traditions are, how they truly are Catholic. Um, and church is diversity in its heart from, from the beginning. So I think the courses in the Hispanic Studies program, while it has the focus on Hispanic ministry and the Hispanic Catholic community, I think that it does broaden the student's horizon. I look for a person who has a sense of humor, and sometimes you just have to laugh at the craziness of life because you know God's accomplishing something in this that you can't yet understand. So after I finished high school, I met Valerie. We fell in love and here we had our family. But when Valerie was dying, one of our conversations were what pertained to what am I going to do with the rest of my life? She said to me, you know, I think you'd make a very good husband for someone, but I also think you'd make a very good priest. I was married for 25 years. I have seven children, four naturally, three adopted, and eight grandchildren as of today. When I first walked in the door here at Sacred Heart, I was amazed at the hospitality. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting that I'd find my room, I'd move in, Instead, I had guys helping me get my luggage up here. We were moving things into the room. They showed me how to find a bookcase. <laughs> the national ties that we formed there, you know, I can visit guys out in Wyoming, or I can go and visit guys in Texas or in California. And one of my classmates at Sacred Heart is with Archdiocese of Anchorage, Alaska. When I do leave Sacred Heart is uh, uh, a lot of friendships developed from uh, men and women throughout the world, one would say, uh, because we have people from all over. So I think that has been an enriching experience for me. Also, um, leaving here with people that come from different perspectives and different experiences, and that has broadened my experience, and hopefully I've broadened their experience as well. Um, the spiritual formation here is uh, profound. Uh, it's um, very satisfying and it promotes significant spiritual growth. Really the whole community at Sacred Heart is very affirmative. Uh, it was just like a family I believe that um, 
because even I lost several family members of my own family there at Sacred Heart and, and how they reached out to me um, really helped me in my own ministry how to reach out to uh, grieving people. They don't only learn some skills for pastoral ministry, but they learn the culture of the diocese in which they're going to live and work. So our pastoral program here at Sacred Heart has really about 50% of it is done here in the metro Milwaukee area, but the other half is done in their home and sponsoring diocese. It's a very warm place um, and everyone here is very supportive. Faculty, staff, seminarians are supportive of each other. Uh, I think seminarians are very generous to each other. People do everything they can to help you. These guys come from all these different geographies in the U.S., from different career backgrounds, different levels of faith experience, and you think, how does this come together? It does. They, really, they absolutely become brothers. Mm -hmm.